All right, I have two tools, one with a straight tip is the 45. All right, as I turn this around, you'll see what we did. I just actually just rounded off the tip so that I had room inside the bolt so it's not hitting anything. And then right here, we drilled a hole straight through at a 45 degree angle, straight through that way, and then inserted the tip. All right, a very, very simple procedure. It's not anything rocket science. And to hold it in place, I used medium super glue. All right, today we're gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna try and make a um, hollowing tool. Uh, it's actually the 5 8 uh, rod, I picked that up from Home Depot. Uh, that came in a 36 inch, so all I did was cut it in half. I got 18 and 18. Cleaned up the edges a little bit. Online, I went and bought this is M42, one quarter by one quarter by two and a half. And it automatically came, well, automatically, but it came in the mail with an 80 degree edge on it. So I'm going to start with an 80 degree. I may take that down to 65 or 60 when I start working with it. But I'm trying to make a hollowing tool. So these are available, all right, and it's six bucks for a piece of steel. But we're going to get two cutters out of this one by cutting it in half. And behind that... I have two pieces of maple, 28 inches long, that are two by two, and I'm gonna make my handles out of those. So that's the products we're gonna start with. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, set it, setting it on an 80 degree, this is 80 degree setup on this currently, and I'm gonna round this nose over so I have a round cutter. And then I'm gonna turn it around and do the other side. As you can tell, we've got a square end on it, but that has to be rounded. And we have a, and this is metal, because when we get done here, this is that piece of metal that I'm going to trim and trying to grind down a little. It's going to get very hot. And if you wanted to test it and stuck it into one of these plastic, one of these, it's going to melt it. So I got a metal one of these, and I'm looking for the quarter inch, which is right there, quarter inch. And I'm going to get that end to fit into that quarter inch. Now this is another handle that I made. Uh, they're very simple and they actually they're a lot of fun to make. This one is actually a spalted oak. Uh, pretty cool looking. This is a one inch piece of uh, ferrule that I um, cut off and put on there. But you can see right inside. And then this drills right down in. This is a, a three quarter inch uh, shank on this one. But this is a nice tool. This baby is just gonna be just touching on the end here. We gotta get it down quite a ways. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a mark on here. So I know where I gotta go. Then I need to know how big this cylinder needs to be. Well, that's easy enough to figure out. Take your calipers. All right, here I'm finishing up the uh, smaller version of the handle. But the reason why I'm even doing a small version of the handle is I lost the video on the large ones. Uh, but it's the same process. All right, here I'm using a quarter inch drill bit to drill my hole for a quarter inch. Uh, H this is high speed steel bit that I'm putting in to the smaller kit. But the other one is a 5 8 inch uh, rod that I'm drilling in through. So it's just larger tools, that's all. Uh, but the same procedure. But just thought you'd like to see just how I go about putting a handle together.
for just keeping some detail work in, but that'll be perfect. This actually gets installed. I use epoxy. Takes okay, so just a little bit of epoxy, drop it down in the hole, and that sucker does not come out of there. But The finished tools, now to put them to the test. And they passed with flying colors. Here you can see me using a straight cutter, working the sides and going down into the bottom. And now I'm going to switch to the 45 to try and catch the upper part coming around the side of the top there. And I got to tell you, I am very impressed with how well these worked. Such a simple, simple tool, but it worked really, really well. With this tool, you'll notice the vice grips. The vice grips, because of the amount of torque pulling down on that tip, just balances it right out. Quite a nice, smooth, smooth interior. Building tools. I mean, everything about lathe equipment should be fun. You should just enjoy it. But don't be afraid to try something new and make, make your own tools. There's all kinds of different ones out there that I've seen people do and just, it's like, oh, geez, I'm going to try that. And I tried it and it's like, well, that, that's a whole new tool I've got in my um, weapons here. All right. I want to I want to give a shout out to Captain Eddie because that's where this information came from that I that I used it from. I know, he calls it hollowing on the cheap. All right. My next video will be on center savers. Uh, the, there's the McNaughton. Uh, there's also the one way and also I use it, which is called a woodcut. But it's not going to be about the tools themselves. It's going to be about why you would might want to make that kind of investment on a center saver. All right. Stay tuned. Have a great day.